All right, guys, today we're going to be uh, replacing the speakers in the RAM. So I got uh, two new sets of 6x9s and a new set of 3.5s for the dash uh, with all the wiring adapters and everything. Um, I have the non-Alpine uh, kind of standard six-speaker uh, stereo in my truck now, uh, which anybody uh, with this generation RAM, you know, 1500, 2500, 3500 that doesn't have the Alpine, this installation should be... Uh, basically identical. So anything like 2009 and newer uh, without the Alpine system uh, This will work for you guys. So these are the speakers I got um, so you can see I got two sets of the kicker uh, These are DSC 693s. I will uh, put a link. I got all of this stuff with the exception of one uh, wiring adapter on Amazon I'll put links to everything in the description. So if you want to get you know the same exact uh, kit or same exact speakers that I got, you know, the links will be uh, down below. So two sets of these speakers here for obviously the front and rear doors. And then another set of three and a half inch speakers for the dash. And then these wiring adapters. So what these do is just plug into your, you know, factory wiring. And then the other side is uh, just normal kind of wiring connectors that go into the back of the speakers. So I got two sets of those, obviously, for the 6x9s. And this is the one I had to order on Crutchfield. They did not have this one on Amazon for whatever reason. Uh, but this is for the dash speakers, the three and a half inch dash speakers. So, so that's the speakers I'm going to be using. I'm um, just going to be using the stock head unit and everything else, so we'll see uh, what the sound difference is going to be. Um, and of course, I'll let you guys know that after I get them installed. So, All right, guys, these uh, front dash speakers are going to be by far the easiest out of uh, all of them because they're just under these front little covers here. All you got to do is get a little flat. I like to use a little panel tool, but you can use a flat blade screwdriver or anything like that. Uh, basically, you just need to get underneath the front here and kind of pry up a little bit. There's two clips in the front. So just pull, kind of pry straight up till you get the front up like that. Then you can just lift up and then pull a little bit forward. So you can see there's, hopefully you can see that, there's like these kind of go down and, and out and kind of clip underneath the front. So once you get that off, the speaker is right underneath there. See if I can bring you in closer. So that's the speaker we're working with right there. And it's just two seven millimeter uh, nuts on each side to pull it out. Before I throw in the new speakers, I wanted to show you guys the difference between the OEM little three and a half and then the kickers I'm replacing them with. I mean, even the, the magnet size alone is, is crazy, the difference. So, and these speakers are like $35 for the pair or something like that. Uh, so definitely worth doing. This is the wiring adapters I got. The, uh, they're basically impossible to hook up wrong because the positive is a bigger terminal and the negative is a smaller terminal, so they will only go on um, you know, one way. You can't accidentally put the negative wire on the positive because it won't fit. And then this side is literally just gonna go straight into that factory adapter uh, that we just pulled off of uh, the OEM speaker. So that's it, we're gonna reverse the process and put this back in. See the nice new 3x5 installed there. So to put this cover back on, it's literally just as easy as sliding it forward. And it'll kind of clip underneath and then you kind of get the two back clips to just pop down and that's it. All right, we're gonna start on the uh, front doors. So to do the front door speakers, you are gonna have to remove the door panel, but uh, it's really not that complicated. Um, and I'll walk through the process now. So we'll start with uh, pulling off this little panel here, there's just three clips on the side, so you can just kind of get your fingers behind it. 
just pulls straight off like that. Next, there is a little uh, panel behind the door handle. So just get in like a little flat blade screwdriver, something small. Just be, you know, take your time, make sure you don't scratch anything here. You can just pop it off like that. So there's just little clips on there. Now behind that, there's a large Phillips screw. So we're gonna take out Once we have the Phillips out, you're going to need a T20 um, because there's six. I'm sorry for all the background noise. There's six T20s around the whole outside of the door panel. So these aren't actual full T20 screws. They are just um, like clips that have basically a T20 in the center of them. So you can just give them each a couple of turns. You'll probably have to put your fingernail kind of behind it to, uh, to get it to actually start to unscrew. You don't have to take them all the way out either. Alright, once we get all those undone, I like to use this little panel tool to just kind of get behind door panel and just push it a little bit and you can get the clip out like that so hopefully you can see what this clip looks like so it just kind of snaps in and once you undo that screw a little bit you can uh, get it to pop out so we're just going to go around the whole outside now and uh, and pop them all out you can also kind of grab onto the door handle too or any part of the door try to get a little bit of leverage just get it to, to pop out Once all six of those of those are out, you need to take the surround uh, around the actual door handle off itself. So you can kind of just pry from the front lightly, and then it kind of has to slide this way to pull it out. So it's got the little shelf on there, or little kind of thing that grabs it. So you just have to slide it forward a little bit. Get that off. Once you have all those off, the door panel will actually lift up. So we're gonna lift it up just enough to uh, pop out the uh, window switch here. And then we'll put it right back temporarily. Just kind of hold it there so you can unplug this. It's just got a little thing you push down with your thumb. Pops out like that. Then you're ready to take the whole door panel off and that's it. So it goes without saying, but put this somewhere safe so you know you don't get it dirty. I like to just throw it in the back seat. All right, now that we got the uh, door panel off, it's time to uh, remove the actual speaker itself. So there are uh, four, I believe they're five millimeter, yeah, five millimeter screws all the way around the outside. Once you have those off, you can literally pull the speaker straight out, and then just a little power plug down there, a little tab on it, pull the speaker out. I wanted to show one thing on the bench here before I put this new speaker in. Uh, that is a little bit of a concern for uh, these model Rams, is the depth of these. So these are the new 6x9s, these is, this is the stock 6x9, so you can see how much taller the new one is. So what that does and you know it'll make more sense when I show you the actual hole in the truck but the new speaker is going to slightly contact this right here which is part of the uh, window mechanism um, so the speaker will kind of slightly contact that I um, know a couple of people personally that run this exact speaker in this truck and it does not cause any issues with the window going up and down or the sound of the speaker or anything like that it's literally just a kind of an interference fit 
um, it just kind of comes with the territory of this truck but just so you know that it will slightly touch this um, but you know with the, the year or two that uh, they've been installed in, uh, in my buddy's truck and actually my brother's truck as well um, they haven't had any issues whatsoever with them so just wanted to cover that because when you go to put that new speaker in it isn't going to sit perfectly flush on here it will have a slight gap and then you will need to use the mounting screws uh, from the speakers themselves because the stock ones have a like a kind of a large head on them and it won't let them fit kind of perfectly in there so there will be a slight gap around here but the speakers are nice and tight they don't rattle they sound good um, but just to uh, give you guys a heads up uh, on that all right we're ready to install these new speakers i got my four mounting screws from the kit Got my wiring hooked up, so this is one of those wiring adapters, literally positive, negative. This goes right into the stock wiring. Clips right in, just like a stock speaker. So this is the kind of tricky part because of the size of that magnet on here. You'll see what I mean. Make sure your wires get nice and tucked in. So it's in, you can see there is a very slight gap around, um, but that's not a huge deal. Yes, it would be ideal if that was totally sealed, and you could use some foam or something like that too if you wanted to seal it up, um, but it shouldn't be, shouldn't be any problem whatsoever. All right, to reinstall the door panel, it's gonna be just the opposite of uh, what we did to take it off. So this door panel has little kind of L brackets on it, and that's why it, you have to just slide it down to uh, reinstall it, so kind of go up make sure your lock goes right through make sure your power cord goes through the hole for your window switch That's it. Your door is going to be basically identical to the front. Main difference is going to be this panel still just pulls straight off, but it's obviously a different size panel. Now you can see some of the clips actually fell off, so I need to make sure I grab them when they go in here, but this just pulls straight out. Then we still just have the clip under here with the Phillips. And then there's five of the T20 clips around the outside. Speaker setup on this is identical, five millimeter bolts. Um, this one does, you don't have to worry about the interference with the actual window regulator itself. Uh, these are deep enough, so it's just a matter of swapping the two out.
All right, just a tip for you guys. If when you're pulling this off, the clips fall out, they actually fall inside the door, which is a, a bit of a pain. But uh, this little thing right here is just like a little window. You can pull that out. And I just used a, uh, a magnet on a little extender and got down in there and was able to uh, just magnetize and pull both of them out. So if your clips fall down inside the door, not a huge deal. Uh, you can generally get them out with a little magnet like this. All right, now that we've got those clips, we're ready to reverse the process and uh, put it all back together. All right guys, that wraps up the install for uh, the kicker speakers and my RAM. I just tested it out and it sounds so much better. Um, I mean, easily twice as much bass, um, which is not hard to, uh, <laughs> to imagine if you look at the tiny size of these magnets and you know, on the six, the stock six by nines are very, very cheap. So um, it's definitely worth the upgrade. If anybody's on the fence about doing it, uh, this convinced me. These speakers are not expensive. They're not super high-end speakers by any means. You can go way, way, way above and beyond kind of what I did. Um, but for a stock head unit, non-amplified you know, amplified kind of system, uh, this was kind of ideal for me. Um, and I would highly recommend these speakers. The three and a half, the highs are so much better, so much more crisp than the stock ones are. The stock three by fives are a joke. Um, and I'm not some kind of like crazy, like you know, audio person that's like, this is like my big hobby or whatever. This is purely, a, you know, someone who just likes to listen to music in the truck and I can definitely tell a difference. So I know if you're really into this kind of stuff, uh, the difference will be really, really huge for you. So um, yeah, and the install, I mean, out of 10, I would say it's like a three. It's really not hard at all. The, the door panels come off super easy. The three and a half are, you know, two screws and a, you know, little clip to get out. So. Um, definitely recommend doing it. Like I said, I'll have all the links in the description to the speakers I bought, the wiring adapters that all worked perfectly, um, and everything you need to, uh, to get it done. So if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know. If you liked the video, make sure to like, subscribe, check out my other videos, um, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.